Okay, I hope each one of you has a copy of the uh, scriptures that I plan to be using today for our thoughts. It's customary the last few years to celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday. He was famous for his I Have a Dream speech. Uh, so I've entitled our message this morning, I Have a Dream, or I Dreamed a Dream. MLK had a dream. He, he said, I have a dream. Joseph dreamed a dream. The difference. One has a dream, as MLK did. He has an aspiration, doesn't he? He aspires to do something one way or another. And when you dream a dream, it's actually an act, isn't it? But Genesis chapter 37, let's read beginning with verse 5. Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. They already hated him. They were envious, jealous of him. Because his father favored at the time, Joseph was the youngest in the family. Sometimes the youngest are accused of being favored <laughs> over the others. That was in our case. I was the youngest in my family of the siblings. And I always got away, my sister said, I always got away more than the rest of us. <laughs> but anyway, Joseph dreamed a dream, and, and he told his brethren that hated him yet the more, and he said unto them, Here I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. Now listen to what I dreamed last night. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. Behold, your sheaf stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream. And he told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father, and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thy dream? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him. But his father observed the saying. In the beginning, we'll talk about Martin Luther King for a moment. He became famous, as I mentioned, for his I Have a Dream speech. In his dream, according to what has been said by him and others, his followers, for equality for his people, to be equal to the white race. He dreamed of a better day, he said. And he was a champion for his people. Even today, if y'all have noticed, you've had the TV on uh, this week. It, every year they have these little speeches and these little kids try to mimic MLK because he truly was their hero. And we'll come back to him in a moment. But in our text, Joseph dreamed a dream. And he shared his dream. He dreamed two dreams, didn't he? And the scripture says twice in these, that we just read, his brethren hated him the more. They were envious, jealous of their own brother.
Joseph's dream was not his aspiration, but his destiny. The difference. According to his dream, he was destined to come to a role of leadership. And if we could take and trace the whole story of, uh, we won't do that this morning, but of Joseph. And we can find uh, Joseph as we traced his life and find him in prison. And the Lord gave him the ability to understand dreams and interpret them. And the Lord brought him to leadership down in Egypt. And the Lord revealed unto him there was coming a great drought that would affect the whole earth. And he did that in a dream. And God used Joseph when he brought him to Egypt to save the people from starvation. <coughs> Because I was coming a great flood, a great uh, drought, excuse me, the opposite. <clears throat> Martin Luther King had some dreams of a better time. He wants us to have dreams for our life. The Lord does. Like MLK. And God wants us to be successful both with our dreams. That is if they have the Lord. And a person plans their life out and they follow the dreams. Number one, they need to include the Lord in whatever they do. A lot of people resented MLK and his dreams. <clears throat> Brother Bobby and myself and Brother Rudolph back there, a little bit older than some of the rest of you. I'm not talking about a lady's age, Jan. But uh, you might be close to our age, somewhere in there, Janice. But we lived in a different day, didn't we? When I went to school, it was all white. Uh, the blacks went to school down in a different place. And they would have a restroom that says white and colored. That's all we knew. We were children. That's, what, that's how we were raised. It wasn't it. We were prejudiced. And somebody got on. We had an old city bus there in Nacogdoches. We could go to town in. When you got on the bus, the colored had to go to the back. That's all we knew. It was that way, wasn't it? But where the injustice came in, it really, if a white person got on the bus and all the seats were taken, the black was supposed to get up and let the white sit down. Was that fair? Well, we as children saw all that. We learned to accept it as the way things were. And then when Martin Luther King's people, that generation, uh, came into existence, we saw things begin to change. MLK was hated by a lot of people. But why? Folk, I didn't know why that they had a one restroom for one, one for the other, other than that's the way it was. My dad worked for a while for a company called Bennett and Clark, a large company, and they had restrooms. They had one. Now get this, 
they had one for the whites, one for the blacks, and one for the Spanish. That was kind of dumb, wasn't it, after we think about it? The people hated Martin Luther King because he tried to change those things. But folks, on a lot of those things, he was right. God doesn't look at the color of the skin, does he? He looks on the heart. But Martin Luther King had a dream that things would get better. And folk, I don't know why there should not be any hatred between the races, but it's been left that way, hasn't it? It should not be so. But a lot of people resented MLK's dream. And I will tell you this much, in case you hadn't figured it out, the world would resent your dream. And they'll try to keep you from your dreams. Like Joseph's brothers. Joseph's brothers, you know the story, I guess believed in human trafficking as they refer to it now. But they took their own brother, started to kill him, and Reuben made, the oldest one made it, he said, well, he's our blood, we better not kill our own brother. He pled for Joseph's life. Then the they decided, hey, we'll make a little money off this deal. So they sold their own brother into slavery. Joseph told them later on, down as the years passed, when they had to come face him down in Egypt, he said, you guys meant it unto evil, but God meant it unto good. God knew what he was doing, and folks, God still knows what he's doing. He still wants you to have a dream for your life, one that will please him. I got to tell you, I've been here a long time as your pastor. I still have a dream for this church. As a matter of fact, since the Lord sent Brother Enrique in and uh, he started a soul winning venture, which I'm grateful for. The best thing that ever happened to this church. We used to have visitation. On Thursday, we went out and knocked on doors. We spent most of our time chasing inactive members. We go see them, not, and, and they'd welcome us. They'd come to church. And not come back till we go visit them again. But I have a dream for this church. That still we become a lighthouse like God intends. He does intend for us to be a lighthouse. And that we see many souls saved. And we see our people grow in the faith. Folks, that's the purpose the Lord set this church up for, his church, so we might grow in the faith and, and increase. And I know there's not many of us here today. Folks, the important thing is not number. Remember that. It's not number. When Elijah face the false prophets of Baal. How many of them was he? One plus the Lord. But folks, there's a lot of souls out there 
that need to know the Lord, living miserable lives. And that's why God's put us here. But we need to have the dream. Yeah, if we go down to our next verse, Revelation 21, verse uh, 1, we as Christians have a dream of destiny. And that dream is found in Revelation 21. And let's read those first five verses. This was in a vision that God gave to John. And he said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. There was no more sea. The word sea means division. Water divided the land from land. There was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them. They shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. He said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. No more sorrow, no more tears. Forty years ago yesterday, Linda and I buried our little boy. January the 19th, 1979. It brought tears because we had planned with everything for this little guy. Lord, that let us have him a couple of days. Took him back. But folk, we weep about it now. But on that day when we are reunited, tears will be no more. Folks, if that don't mean something to you, then life is futile. And then we'll come down to, we're told in the last days that men shall dream dreams, especially old men. Acts 17, let's read it. Shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I'll pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see vision, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants, on my handmaids, I'll pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy or preach. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Some of this transpired Pentecost. But it's talking about having visions and dreaming dreams. And 
And folks, there's nothing wrong with having a good dream again, is it? For your life. An aspiration. Look at verse 20 that I just read at the bottom of the page. When I was preparing my message, and in the news has been as it has been this week, I chose to add this to my scriptures. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. You know what's supposed to happen tonight at 936? The blood moon's going to show we're going to have a complete eclipse. It'll be a long time before it repeats itself. I thought it kind of odd that the moon's going to turn to blood. They call it the blood moon. Am I right? Y'all been noticing that? Well, they say the best time out tonight, by the way, it's going to be cold, so if you get out, take care of yourself, but you can see the blood moon. Now, I know there's a fellow written a book about the blood moons. I don't know if I believe all the fellow had to say in the book, but he's referencing that the Lord gave those blood moons for a sign and a season. We knew though the Lord created the moon for signs and seasons. The old almanacs depended on that, didn't they? I didn't say I believed in the almanac, but they, when they published them, they went with the signs of the moon. So we don't know what the Lord's got up for us, do we? But I especially want to the last verse on this page, I want to dwell with that, and I'm going to leave it there with you all this evening, or this morning. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Folks, there's not a better verse in all the scriptures than that one verse. Whosoever, don't matter who they are, how good they've been, how good they intend to be. But what matters is who calls on the name of the Lord. Amen. And the Lord invited, he said, whosoever will let him come, let him ask. We call that free salvation. Because it's given to us by the grace of God. Folks, something that none of us deserve. Our soul winners can tell you that they've been knocking on doors now for some time. And they start talking to people about their soul. They get where they expect what I've heard over the years. Well, how's it with you and the Lord? Oh, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. You ever heard that before? I'm doing the best I can. Well, I go to church. I'm not real religious, but I'm just as good as those church people down here. But most people will say, I'm trying. Folk, I'm glad. Either you call on the Lord or you don't. That's the only difference, isn't it? Right. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord might be, shall be saved. Folks, that's why we can say we know where we're going because the Lord said it. 